Assalamualaikum and hello. Nice to meet you again. In this session, I would like to talk about distribution of load in power group. Let's take a look at this diagram. So we have a group of power. This is the power cap. The, the function is to distribute the load to each power. So let's say we have a vertical load acting at the center of the power group. Then we will anticipate that the load will be distributed equally to each individual part. However, under certain circumstances or so under certain reasons, this power group may be subjected to moment, for example. Okay? So when we have this condition, we have vertical load and then we have moment, then we would anticipate that certain parts need to carry additional load whereas other parts maybe need uh, will experience less load to be carried okay so in order to estimate the load to be carried by each part we use this equation and this equation is expressed as q sub m equals to q divided by n plus minus m sub y multiplied by x divided by summation of x squared plus minus m sub x multiplied by y divided by summation of y squared. Okay. Let's take a look at the definition of each item. Q sub m here is defined as the actual load on any path. So let's say we have number of paths. So Q sub m, we use this equation to estimate the load to be carried by individual part. Q here is the vertical load acting at the center of the power group. Okay. And then N here equals to the total number of parts in the group. If we have 5 parts, so N equals, N equals to 5. So if we have 9 parts, so N equals to 9. Okay. Mx, my, so we have M, Mx here, my here. Mx, my are the moment about x and y axis respectively. So Mx is the moment about x axis. If let's say we have a coordinate system, this is x, this is y. So Mx here is the moment with respect to x axis, whether it's going that way or going this way this way or this way so that is the moment with respect to x axis whereas m sub y here is the moment with respect to y axis so this is the y so moment could be like this or the other way around so those are the definition for mx and m sub y so in calculating uh, the load to be carried by each part, so we have to establish the coordinate system of XY system, the normal coordinate system. Right? And then X and Y here, X is the distance from part to Y axis, and Y is the distance from part to X axis. Right? Previously we have moment, now we have uh, distance. So let's say the part is located here. So this is the x distance. So x measured from y axis. And then here y is measured from x axis. Right? So x and y distance from pi to y and x axis respectively. Okay, why is the purpose of having plus and minus sign here? Okay. So plus here indicates that when the part is to carry additional load due to the moment then we have to use plus sign on the other hand if we anticipate the part is to carry less load or the part or the load is being reduced then we have to use minus sign depending upon the moment whether it's my or mx okay let's take a look at example how to use this equation and under what condition okay this is a we have an example here right let's say we have a group of power 
So this is the side view. Okay. There's a vertical load of 1,000 kilometer, and then a counterclockwise moment equals to 190 kilonewton meter. So this is the plan view, or we view it from the top. So we have five number of paths: one, two, three, four, five. And these are the distance between paths. Okay. From this pile to the center pile here, distance is 0 0.5. To center to bottom pile here, 0 0.5. And then left to the center, 1 meter. From center to the right, 1 meter. Okay. So we are asked to estimate load to be carried by each pile. If you remember the equation here, we have MY, we have MX, we have MX, we have Y and so forth. So let's establish a coordinate system. So the coordinate system, we place the origin of the coordinate at the centroid of the pile group. So in this case, we establish the XY axis. So the origin of the coordinate system is at the center here. So this is X axis and this is the Y axis. Alright. So if we look at this diagram here, the moment. Moment. So just imagine X is in the horizontal direction and Y axis actually is going into the board. Okay, going into the board. So this moment on the counterclockwise direction is actually M sub Y because it's about Y axis Y going into the board. X is on the horizontal direction. Okay. Something like this. So here we identify that that is MY equal to 190 kN meter. It's only one moment. So in this case, moment with respect to x axis equals to 0. So MX equals to 0. Let me erase this. Then, and then we identify the value of each item in this equation. So after we have identified that 190 kN meter is the moment about y axis, y axis, mx uh, moment about x axis is zero. So n here is the number of part one, two, three, four, five. So n equals to five. Okay. And then let's calculate the summation of x squared. So we have to calculate the distance in x squared and then we add together. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 piles. 5 piles. So before that, let's put some designation to each pile. Let's say this is pile number 1, this is pile number 2, pile number 3. Pile number four and the center here is pile number five. So we have one pile here, one pile here, here, here. Okay. So summation of x squared equals to this is x, this is x, this is x, this is x. Okay. So from y axis to pile number one, the distance is one meter. Pile number one, one squared. Plus, because it's summation, pile number 2, the distance from pile to y axis, that is x squared, this is 1 meter, so 1 squared. Pile number 3, here, the distance from this pile to y axis equals to 1 meter, so 1 squared. Plus, pile number 4, the distance from y axis is also 1 meter, so 1 meter squared. Pile number 5 at the center, so the distance is 0. So, plus 0. So 1 plus uh, 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square equals to 4. Okay, and then let's calculate the summation of y squared. 
that is the summation of y. Okay, we measure from the x-axis. So pi number one, the distance y here is 0 0.5 meters. So pi number one 0.5 meters square. Pi number two here, the distance here is, is 0 0.5 meter as well. So plus 0 0.5 meter square. Pile number three, the distance from x axis, also one uh, 0 0.5 meter square. Okay, 0 0.5 meter square. Pile number four, the distance from x axis, 0 0.5 meter so square. Pile number five is at the center, so the distance y is equal to zero. So plus zero. So what we have here 0.5 square, 0.5 square, 0.5 square, 0.5 square. 0 .5 square. So the summation here equals to 1. So x squared equals to 4. Uh, summation of x squared equals to 4. Summation of y squared equals to 1. Okay. Right. Okay, let's calculate the load to be carried by pile number 1. Okay. Q1. Indicate pile number 1 here. Pile number 1 equals to Q, that is the vertical load. The vertical load is given as 1000 kilometer. So it's 1000 divided by N, that is the total number of piles 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5. Right? And then M sub Y. M sub y equals to 190 kilometer meter. So 190 multiplied by x. Pile number 1 here, the distance from y axis, that is in x direction, equals to 1 meter. So multiplied by 1. Divided by summation of x squared. Summation of x squared equals to 4. Okay. Now, which sign that we have to use? Plus or minus? Refer to this diagram. So the moment is in this direction. So we would anticipate that pile number 1 will carry additional load. So we use sign plus. Right? So if we calculate Q sub 1, the value should be Value, value should be 247 247.5 kilo newton okay if you refer to this figure there's another pile that carries equal load as pile number one that is pile number three so q1 will carry 247.5 kN similarly with pile number 3 okay let's move to other pile let's say pile number 2 okay pile number 2 so use the same equation q sub 2 to indicate pile number 2 q as before the Vertical load equals to 1000 divided by the number of piles equals to 5 and then summation, sorry, the M sub Y equals to 190 multiplied by the X pile number 2, the distance from the Y axis to pile number 2 equals to 1 divided by summation of X squared equals to 4 okay then let's take a look at this diagram pile number 2 so the moment in this direction so we would anticipate that pile number 2 will carry less load due to the moment so we use sine minus here okay so when we calculate it should equal 152 
0.5 kN. Okay. If you notice that mxy because mx equal to zero, we just ignore it. Okay. So refer to this figure again. There's another power that carries similar load as Q sub two. That is Q sub four. Okay. Same condition. So Q sub two equal to one five two point five kilonewton. Similarly, pile number four. Okay. Last pile that we have to consider here is pile number five. Pile number five. So Q five Q equal to one thousand divided by number of pile is 5 and then plus or minus later on ny equals to 190 kilometer meter and then x the distance of this pile with respect to y axis so this pile is located at the center right of the group and the location of the origin of the coordinate system also in this point so x equals to 0 divided by 4 so it doesn't matter plus or minus here because this term equals to 0 then 1000 divided by 5 equal to 200 kilometer so that's how we calculate the distribution of load in pile group so in this example pile number 5 carries 200 kiloliton, pile number 1 and pile number 3 carry 247.5 kiloliton, pile number 2 and pile number 5, oh sorry, pile number 2 and pile number 4 carry uh, 152.5 kiloliton. So after we have calculated the load to be carried by each pile, then in, the, in design, you have to compare with the allowable load of each pile. So you have to refer back to previous videos how to calculate the pile capacity and bearing, shaft friction and so forth. So you get the allowable load and then you compare with these values. If each pile can carry, meaning the design is okay, but if any of the piles are able to carry the load that we have calculated here based on the distribution of load, then you have to redesign. So that's all I want to talk about this uh, distribution of load in pile group. Until again, thank you.